In this video, I'll go over two music video effects that you can use in your next edit. I'll also take a look at Envato's Gen AI, who are today's sponsors. More on that later in the video. I'm gonna start by going to my effects panel, grab an adjustment clip. I have my clip set to five frames each, so I'm gonna click my adjustment clip, hit Control D or Command D, and I'm gonna type in five on the frames. I'm gonna right click my adjustment clip and open the fusion. The media one selector, I'm gonna hit Control and Space, and type in Transform. Now there's two different versions. You want the one without the XF on the end. So we hit transform. I'm going to go over to the inspector tab, right click on zoom for the modify width, add them curves. I'm click on modifier tab, change source to duration and change curve to easing. Here using the offset and scale, I'm going to set my parameters. Offset is pretty much the start of your composition and the scale is the end. So under offset, I'm going to double click, type in one. That's going to bring the image back to into view. Then I'm going to move and play here to frame four here. I'm holding control and scroll up my mouse wheel. Right now it's scaling all the way up to four. I don't want it to scale that high. So I'm gonna double click here and type in like 1.3. So that's gonna create my zoom effect. I'm gonna go back to the tools tab. And the reason why we're using this transform because it's a lot easy on the motion blur. So if I hit the drop down here and go to motion blur, I can turn this up to one and you can just zoom in like motion blur effect. Unlike normal motion blur, it doesn't take a lot of computing power. So I can just play it in real time. Now to spice it up a little bit, we're gonna go and grab a brightness contrast node we're going to make it create this brightness flash effect at the beginning of the composition. So similar to the transform, we're also going to do this without using any keyframes. So I'm going to go over here to Gain, right click, go to Modify Width, Add them Curve. I'm going to go to the Modifier tab. Once again, I'm going to set this to Duration and Easing. And I'm also check Mirror. Go to Offset, double click. I'm going to set it to 1. It's going to bring it back to its normal levels. Mirror check, it'll go from 1 up to right now it's set to 5. And then go back down during the middle of the composition, so around about frame two and a half or so. That's a little too bright for my liking, so I'm gonna actually turn it down to roughly about two. So now we got this set and go back to edit page. Then we're just gonna hold alt and copy that clip and place it over our other clips. Now since we didn't use any keyframes, this clip is adjustable to any scale for any future composition. So if I want this to go a little bit faster, I can actually select all this, hit control D and type in three frames, hit change. Now I have a keyboard shortcut set for closing gaps for shift B. If you don't have a shortcut, you have to go over here to edit, and then select delete gaps. So like I said, right here, I have it set to shift B. If you want to create your own keyboard shortcut, go to DaVinci Resolve, go to keyboard customization, type in delete gaps. Once you find it, you can then create your own keyboard shortcut and then save it. So now that I have the clips reset to three frames, the zoom effect occurs a lot faster. So now I want to show you how I created this scene using AI. Big shout out to today's sponsor. Envato is a single subscription with over 22 million different assets for any type of project. Ranging but not limited to stock photos, stock videos, royalty free music, video templates, presets, and much more. Envato's Gen AI offers a number of different features. Today we're just going to strictly focus in on the video generation. For this effect, I'm at the very end of my clip. I'm going to hit the left arrow on my keyboard, go over one frame, then I'm going to hit R and select freeze frame and I'm gonna export this. So now I'm gonna select this clip, go up to File, Export, and then Export Current Frame as a still. At this point, you can give it a name or what have you, and type in Demo and save it. So now the link in the description is taken to Avato, and we're gonna be focused on the Gen AI feature. So we'll go over here to Gen AI, hit the drop down. we're gonna go to Video Gen. As you can see here, I've been messing around with it quite a bit. Within my history, I can download the video clip, I can copy the prompt that I used to create the clip, or I can delete it. I'm gonna hit Copy Prompt, Hit the back arrow now. So now I'm gonna hit the plus here. Go up to upload image and select the image that I exported from DaVinci. Select open. Then I'm gonna paste my prompt by hitting control V or command V if you're on Mac. Of course, if you never used this before, you can basically just type in a prompt and you wanna try to be as detailed as possible. Utilizing the AI enhancement tool, I went back and forth with the prompt, which basically you just click this here. So I typed in a few little details, clicked on this here, and it'll basically use AI to scan your image and try to give you a detailed prompt of what you're looking for. I'm not gonna read the whole prompt here. It actually went very much in detail. It basically, it's transformed the footage into a nostalgic 1999 or 1990s VHS look. Add a classic VHS tape, tape gain, slight static interference, chromatic aberrations, so on and so forth. You can set your aspect ratio. So if you want it for YouTube, shorts, or TikTok, something like that, you'll select nine by 16. We're gonna stick with 16 by nine for now. And then I'm gonna click generate. Now generation usually takes roughly about one to two minutes. Well, actually here it says four minutes. I've never known it to take that long though. And that is done, took rough about two to three minutes, and I like this one. Now his face over time does get a little weird looking, but overall it's a good render. I'm gonna download it and then just save it to my desktop. Now with the Gen AI, you do get 30 renders a month. I'm already down to 11, so I'm not gonna render at this next one here. I'm just gonna click on preview first frame. Now by doing this, it allows you to get a look of what 
Gen AI is cooking up with without you actually using any on your generations. So I'm gonna click preview first frame. And also with this too, I did forget to re-add the image from the from DaVinci that I used. So this here is just basically just generating a completely new image. Just here it actually looks really, really realistic. Now all three of these look good. I actually am gonna generate one of these. I think I'm gonna generate this one with the big TV. So I'm gonna set this as first frame and then hit generate and see what it looks like. So this would be creating a whole new scene without using, without using any previous footage or a previous image. It has that overly sharp look to it, but it all, overall it does look good. I love the CRT TV. Everything looks pretty realistic within the image itself. Now back in DaVinci, I'm just gonna grab my image off screen here, bring it to my timeline and just slide it in place. Play it back, you'll notice it did a good job of maintaining the look of the original image before transitioning into the AI generation. If I'm not mistaken, all the Gen AI's offerings are unlimited to use with the exception of the video gen for now, which like I said earlier, gives you 30 generation. If you'd like me to do a whole breakdown of the full suite of what Gen AI offers, be sure to drop a comment down below. So the next thing is gonna be a two-on-one. I got my original clip and then I got a clip I wanna transition into. I'm gonna hold shift and hit the right key to move exactly one second into that clip. And then I'm gonna split the clip. I'm gonna move this clip up, select this backspace here, and then hit delete. It's gonna rip or delete that, and then I'm gonna move this over top of my, my previous clip. With my playhead over that clip, I'm going to Fusion. I'm gonna use the Magic Mask now to mask in my subject. So now I'm gonna select my subject. I'm gonna select Better, and then I'm gonna track back and forward. Now with the Magic Mask selected, I'm gonna go over and select a background node, which is gonna automatically create a merge. <laughs> I'm just gonna rearrange it real quick here, and then I'm gonna take the output then we'll take the output of the magic mask and connect it to the blue mask input of the background node. That's going to create this silhouette effect. I'm just going to change the color. You can change it whatever you want to. I'm going to use white and then select the background node, hit control space and type in zoom blur. I'm going to turn it up a little bit and get that over exaggerated blur look. Now back on the edit page, I'm going to place my playhead in the first beginning of this clip. I'm going to hit the arrow key once and then split the clip. And to keep this from actually affecting this bottom clip here, I'm going to hit control Z to go back. I'm just going to go over here now and lock this in place. So now I'm going to split the clip again and this is one, two, just every, other, every frame you're gonna cut. Then after you're done with that, you're gonna select your second clip, hold control or command if you're on Mac, and then select every other clip. After you're done with that, you're gonna hit the backspace key to get rid of those clips. That's gonna create this flash figure transition. Now I'm gonna unlock this bottom layer. Now I select the second clip, hold alt, and I'm gonna move up to make a copy. I'm gonna take that into Fusion. I'm gonna use the magic mask again. So once again, I'm gonna select the magic mask, select my subject, now this particular clip, I do lose part of the subject because it's actually like this kind of blur effect down here in the original clip, as you can kind of see right here. I'm not gonna focus on that too much for the purpose of the demo of the video. So once I have my subject track, I'm just gonna hit, go back to the edit page. I'm actually gonna take that clip, hold shift, and I'm gonna move up just to make sure I keep it in place. Then I'm gonna select the bottom clip, hold alt, and then move up to make another copy. So right now you should have three copies. The first copy should be masked out and your next two copies will be perfectly normal. Then we're gonna go to the effects tab going to open effects, I'm gonna look for invert. You're gonna select the inverted color and then place it on the middle clip. And this clip here doesn't have a lot of color in the background, so it's actually kind of a bad example, but what I'm gonna do now is go over here to effects tab. I'm gonna uncheck the channel, so now it's giving me kind of this teal blue like look. Now I'm going to right click the middle clip, open in Fusion. It's gonna look perfectly normal in Fusion, but don't worry about that. And select the medium one, hit control space, and we're gonna type in grain. Once I find the grain, and then I'm gonna turn up the power to basically over exaggerate the grain. And then I'm gonna go back to the edit page. So now you just have this grain look in the background. So now, just like the previous clip, I'm gonna chop this clip up, but instead of every frame, I'm gonna do every two frames. So one, two, split, one, two, split, and repeat it that way. And this is gonna be enough for right now. This don't need to be that long because it's a quick transition. So I'm gonna hold control, and then select every other frame. Then also delete this back end clip. And then I'll transition to the inverted effect. What we're gonna do now is go back to the first clip here, I'm gonna go use the crop tool. So we'll go over here to the inspection tab, double click on crop, and you can crop however you want to. So I'm gonna crop from the right. I'm gonna start right in the middle of the subject, and I'm actually add a little softness so that edge is not so, so harsh. Then I turn up the crop a little bit more. Then I'm gonna do a different crop for the next clip. For the next clip, I'm gonna crop from the top, put about halfway or so. And once again, I'm gonna increase the soft edge. And basically, you're gonna do a different crop for each clip. So I'm gonna go to the next clip now. I guess I crop from the left. As for this last clip, I'm gonna crop from left to right and basically try to center it around the subject by right there and increase the softness. So now you have this flicking inverter effect. So now we need something to really set it off. I'm gonna go to effects, grab an adjustment clip. I'm gonna click the clip and hit control D. It's like one second. 
hit change. I'm actually gonna I'm shorten it just some clip to make it right the same length as my in inverted flicker. Then I'm gonna go to the toolbox, go to, I'm gonna type in rumble. I'm gonna use my camera shake preset. So I'm gonna select rumble pack and then place it on the adjustment clip. I'm gonna go over into the inspector, scroll down. I'm gonna turn the flash off and flash strength down. I'm gonna change from X, Y, Z to just X, Y. Increase the speed and the shake. And this automatically tapers off towards the end. So now you'll get the flash and then inverted flash. <laughs> if you don't have the rumble pack, you can go into open effect, type in camera shake. You can place it on the adjustment clip. Then from there, you just use keyframes. So if you use an open effects, you basically want to use keyframe. I go at least to the middle of the listen clip and just turn up the motion scale, set a keyframe, and then go back to the beginning, turn it down to zero, and go to the end and turn it down to zero. And I turn up my speed and the motion blur and turn the motion blur all the way up. So it looks pretty decent, but not as good as my rumble pack. That's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section down below. Big shout out and thank you to Envato for sponsoring today's video. And I'll see y'all next time.